Do you like my shoes? How cool are they? Yeah. I'm meeting my friend Sandra for lunch. We've, I'm going into a back garden. We're going to have a KFC and I'm just feeling a little bit free and footloose. So I thought, oh, I'm, I want my sparklies. I've been put lippy on. How about that? Anyway, this is my books of girl authors that I've got waiting to read. So, quite a few. Oh, I need to get my glasses on. Hang on a second. Right, quite a few. Lucinda Riley. So I've got Hot House Flower, The Olive Tree, The Italian Girl, The Love Letter, which I really want to read and haven't read yet, The Butterfly Room, The Angel Tree, The Girl on the Cliff, The Light Behind the Window, and these are part of a, a seven a book trilogy. I've read the first one, The Seven Sisters, which I don't have anymore because I've read it. Um, the Storm Sister, The Pearl Sister and The Moon Sister. Now, um, yeah, I've read the very first one, The Seven Sisters um, of Parsalt, uh, yeah, Par and uh, I really enjoyed it. It's the journey of seven sisters that were all adopted by a man called Parsalt. Oh, God. I wouldn't believe I straightened it this morning. And uh, it's about their journey and uh, how, why they were adopted and where they came from, because they came from all different parts of the globe. Um, uh, and it's a very interesting book. I'll do a little bit of a talk on that in a minute, then you'll understand where I'm coming from. And then the next books are Rachel Hoare. I think I've shown you these before. A Place of Secrets, A Gathering Storm, The Love Child, the House at Bellevue Gardens and The Silent Tide. Now Rachel's written a lot of books as well. I've read one but do you think I can remember the name of it? I thought it was The Secret Garden. Maybe, I haven't got that one there. Um, which I quite enjoyed. It's a bit, um, it's a bit, it's very gentle, you know. Uh, there's nothing to worry about in these books. So uh, <coughs> yeah, I quite like her. I don't read her very often but um, if I want a quick nice read then I'll pick up a Rachel Hall. Then I've got my Margaret Atwood. Now Oryx and Crake I read years ago and to be honest with you I can't really remember too much about it so I've, I've got that again so I'm going to reread that one. Hag Seed was bought for me uh, by my lovely friend Emma for my birthday last year I think and I believe I've read that as well um, but I don't mind rereading it and I have read this. Uh, but that was a long time ago. Wow, I must have been, oh, I don't know, 18, maybe. Um, so I haven't, I'm going to reread those because I've really forgotten about them. I can't believe I forgot to mention this, look. The Heart Goes Last by Margaret Atwood. Another one of my books that I need to read. But I'm Margaret, I haven't read this one of Mar Margaret Atwood. It's signed. And I didn't remember to mention it. How bad? Ah. Happy person. Also, I've put in one Sarah Waters here, Fingersmith, which I've been told is a really good book. Um, I'd like to collect some of her books to have a read because she's a very good writer. I think she's a lesbian writer. Um, a lot about gay gay relationships and stuff but I just apparently she's really really good so um yeah looking forward to that one and then I've got my Kate Mortons who I have to admit at the moment is actually my favorite writer at the moment I've got the house at Riverton the lake house and the clockmaker's daughter which is her newest one. Oh, actually I have to go and get I've got a signed copy of that which I'll go and I'll go and grab in a minute um but she's a really, really beautiful writer. I love her writing, the way she writes. It's very poetic and um, it's proper prose, proper... Oh, I just love her writing. But they are... They don't seem that big. They're quite... quite. They're over four or five hundred pages, I think, most of her books. Um, yeah, that one's... 
that's 589 pages. Um, but when you get into them and you just get lost in her world of writing, um, there are a few. She's only written about five or six books. Uh, the House at Riverton, The Forgotten Garden, The Distant Hours, which I think might have been one of my favourites. That was a really nice one because it had stories within stories, which was nice. The Secret Keeper and The Lake House. So I've read all of her books and I can't wait for her new one to come out. Um, but yeah, she's great, Kate Morton. I thoroughly recommend her. She's an Australian writer, but she writes a lot about English um, countryside houses. The houses actually become characters in her books or the places where she is. So what I'll do is I'm going to go and grab my signed copy of the Kate Morton because I'm very proud of that and then we we'll talk some more. So here is my signed Kate Morton hardback. I've never read this book because I don't like reading hardbacks. I much prefer a paperback but oh, look at this. Signed by the author. Ho, ho, ho. I do like a good signed book. So yeah, she's a uh, She's a good author. So this one is, my father called me Birdie. He said I was his little bird. Other knew me as his child, the clockmaker's daughter. William called me his muse, his destiny. My real name, no one remembers. The truth about that summer, no one else knows. So literally this is telling the story of Birdie and how she became a muse and um, I'm not going to give too much away because uh, a spoiler would be a spoiler with that uh, but it's a it's a really good book it's a mystery they're mysteries so have a read if you want I thoroughly recommend anything that Kate Morton's are in so back to Lucinda Riley um, and about the seven sisters it's not even it's not a trilogy or a quartet it's it's seven seven books about seven sisters all adopted by Mar Salt um, but none of them know why until he actually dies and then these left these clues for them to go and find out about their past and where they came from um, I've read book one which was really nice I think her name was Ali I think her name was I'm terrible at remembering honestly um, and then we get to this bit oh, I can't hold the book Hang on a sec, there we go. Ooh. Are you going out, Paige? Not at the moment, no. You're not? No. Um, I'm going to just take him, so an hour or so. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I'm going out at 12, Mum. Oh, okay. Right, so we get into this part. You've got Pa Salt, the sister's adopted yeah, father. Oh, <sighs> hopefully. Got a bit of peace and quiet. Anyway, back to the cast of characters. Here we go. So, oh, we have we have Pa Salt, the sister's adoptive father. Marina or Ma, the sister's guardian. Claudia, housekeeper at Atlantis, which is the place where they lived in complete isolation and sounds so idyllic. George Hoffman, Par Salt lawyer, Christian the skipper. And the Diapolese sisters, Maya, Ali, Star, Cece, Tiggy, Electra, and the one I've been calling me rope for absolutely ages, but of course it's not, it's Merope, which is actually a really lovely name. Um, they're all named after constellations of stars. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce some of those because I can't even speak English, let alone any other. And um, yes, it, uh, Storm Sister, I, I've got to work out where... She, I mean, she's, been, she's a prolific writer, seriously. She's, these aren't even half of the books that she's done. Um, I think she was used to be a, a, an actress or something and then she became poorly. Um, and she wrote her first book at the age of 24. Uh, and she's written oh, so many books, all of these books here. So, oh, so the Seven Sisters, you've got um, the, that one I've read, and the Storm Sister, which is the one I've got there. So that's good. I've got the next one. 
the shadow sister don't have and the pearl sister I do have um, so and I've also got the moon sister which is obviously after the pearl sister so that's good I just I just need to get my collection up I need to get the shadow sister next but um oh so I can start I can start that's a chunky monkey though chunky monkey of a book again uh, that's 690 pages although I have to say the writing isn't isn't terribly small so I should be okay <clears throat> so the seven sisters series is based on the legends of the seven sisters of the Pleiades star cluster uh, and it's a huge project. Seven books, six of them about each of the sisters Parsalt has adopted from around the world and brought back to Atlantis. His fairy tale home nestling on a private peninsula on the shores of Lake Geneva. Oh, it sounds so lovely. I could live there. I wouldn't want to be in total isolation like they were, but um, yeah, interesting. And then you, you just, in each book, you find out. I like this is the second sister so this would be Ali's story I think I think Maya was the first one um, and uh, why she's called the storm sister there'd be a reason why she's called the storm sister so it's obviously where she comes from and what her character characteristics are and um, who she is a pers as a person but they're all adopted so they're all adopted seven sisters but um, oh, I can't say her name but Merope was the seventh sister that didn't get adopted because Par Salt hunted the globe for her. But apparently the right child didn't come up for adoption or the child he was looking for. It was a specific child. I mean, it makes him sound like a pedo. He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't. He was a great father. He was an adventurer and he was always off out adventuring on the seas and a yachtsman. And just uh, the kids were taught at home and he was off searching for the other children to go into the sister, seven sisters and um oh it's, it's just oh it's like a it's like a modern fairy tale but of course the sisters once past salt dies then there's a problem because it's like none of them know where they came from he's left clues N don't know why they were adopted and why they were specifically chosen to be in my past salt's family and um it's fascinating it's fascinating but i as a writer of course i wouldn't want the responsibility of having to write seven books like that about different people it's a bit like um jk rowling with the harry potter series could you imagine the pressure of having to write the last book the last book so uh when we uh when we find the out last Mer book is actually about the missing sister merope um and why she is out there and I think the girl, I, I, in my head, I don't know because I haven't read it, obviously. I'm only on book two. Um, in my head, the, the sisters find her and, um, and then we discover why she wasn't adopted and how come, Ma, pa, how come Pa Salt didn't manage to find her. So, yeah, all very interesting. Very, very good author. But they are, I mean, and I keep saying they're chunksters. All the female authors that I seem to like, seem to write really big books. Um, but, you know, they don't take that long. If you get into them, they, you could do that in, in three days, if you get into it. Um, on a holiday read, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. But I can't wait to get in them, and I really, really want to read this one. And I might even actually make it my next one. I really want to read this one. Um, When Sir James Harrison, one of the greatest actors of his generation, passes away at the age of 95, he leaves behind not just a broken, heartbroken family, but also a secret so shocking, so devastating, that it will rock the English establishment to the core. Oh, my God. And I did actually start it, but literally I just got waylaid with life. Life just gets in the way. I'm such a busy person that um, reading is a total luxury for me. That's why I wanted to start this YouTube channel. If nobody watches it, really, I'm not really that worry worried. It's just my way of making myself accountable to sit down and read. I just say, right, I'm going to do that one next. So even though I've got loads on my pile, I am going to be reading this really soon. I can't tell you when, but really soon. So hold me accountable to that one, all right? Take care, guys. Have a lovely day. Um, it's a bit cold today. They've had, they said snow. We've had a bit of snow. We never have snow on the south coast. If we get a bit of snow, you know it's bad everywhere. But when I say snow, they were quite big chunks. They were like that. But 
it lasted about 10 minutes. Nothing settled, so I'm pleased about that because I don't like snow. But um, it's, it's really pretty when you look at it on the hills and everything. When the cars start driving on it, it goes that brown, shitty, mushy colour. No, I don't like it. Anyway, waffling. Take care. Take care. Uh, I'll see you really soon and um, have a great day. Ta-da.